You may be shocked to find out how often health code violations happen. Here's a hint. They happen all the time. All. The. Time. That hot dog joint down the road probably has a health code violation. Hole in the wall burger sport? Health code violation. Your favorite lunch restaurant? Definitely has a health code violation. Though they're fairly common, not all are restaurant shutdown worthy. Some are simple oversights with easy fixes. However, many other health code violations will make you puke. And yes, they are real. And yes, they could happen at your favorite restaurant without you even knowing. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the grossest, most disgusting health code violations found on the web. I'm Tristan with List25, and now I'm the one who wants Mike back, because I just don't want to read any of these. Twenty-five. In the words of Redditor SuperDaveP270, Former health inspector here, I once discovered a rat infestation in the kitchen of a hospital. They asked me if I could prove my suspicions. I pointed out the numerous foodstuffs with one to two circular holes chewed in them, but they didn't seem convinced. I showed them the trail of droppings and footprints coming and going from a hole in the floor drain, but they didn't seem convinced. I showed them the three dead rats I had discovered under and around equipment. I think they began to believe me at that point. 24. A toilet with a pipe that led openly into the kitchen where the waste flowed into the open drain. 23. Redditor, not a Terminator, although not a health inspector, recounts the following story. I worked as an assistant cook in a restaurant. Two weeks into the job, I opened a cupboard to get a can of tomato sauce, and I see a huge ass tarantula scuttling away behind the cans. I told the boss what I'd seen, so that maybe we should get someone to deal with the huge ass spider living in the kitchen. Boss turns to me and says, oh, I see you've met Eduardo. Just don't put your hand too close to him, you'll be good. Later, another cook proceeded to explain to me the spider had been living there for two years, and they allowed it because he kept rodents and roaches away. 22. A diner in Bloomington, Indiana found a finger alongside his burger when he dined at a local TGI Fridays. A member of the kitchen staff had cut off a portion of his finger, and in the confusion that arose when people rushed to help the man, the finger ended up on a plate. It was only a small bit of finger, but the diner noticed it immediately. Shocking. 21. An angry employee who got fired defecated in a milkshake machine. The machine was only cleaned a few days later. 20. A rat that had half eaten through a loaf of bread before it had been put through the bread cutting machine. In each slice of bread, you could see a segment oh, of the rat. Sorry. sorry. That's okay. Oh, Our teleprompter oh, runner is getting oh, disgusted no. too. So yeah, you could see a segment of the rat in the bread. That's pretty neat. 19. When one health inspector looked at a grill, it was green. Apparently, it not been cleaned in so long, food actually started to mold on it. The owner of the restaurant said, you're supposed to clean it? 18. One inspector recounts, I saw pies that hadn't yet had their lids put on. So they were open to a cockroach infested kitchen. We were getting complaints about half eaten cockroaches in pies. 17. One time, the McDonald's I worked for had a health inspection. We had a few racks of expired buns. They'd been expired for at least a week and were getting moldy. My boss pushed them to the back, where the trash sits. After the inspector left, he pulled them all out. I did my shift setup and started throwing away the buns. He got angry, saying I was wasting money. I told him they were moldy. He said, we can scrape it off. I asked him if he would personally eat one, and he said no and walked away. 16. The dual combo of mouse and roach infestations are usually the worst. The urine and feces are usually the most unsanitary part of the equation. Or the triple whammy with rats on the exterior. Nasty characters, but they tend to stay outside or in basements. One of my first restaurants had such an infestation. A mouse had been stuck in a trap and had eaten the brains of her young to stay alive. The corpses were hollowed shells. The maggots had cleaned them out. The roach infestation was contained in the moist and warm kitchen where the food was made. The most common issue I came across was insufficient cleaning and deapilated structures. When it comes to pests in a restaurant, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of how many. 15. The brother of a health inspector explains the following. Every kitchen operating for over a year has black mold somewhere. Permanent fixtures, old food wedged in the corners of flooring and cracks, unclean utensils, it's always there. 
One time, he had to investigate a Denny's after a woman got ill dining there. Upon the results of his investigation, he found that the cook had been placing the spatula in the crack of his buttocks between meals. My brother immediately shut the place down and had the entire restaurant swept for dirt and other grime. Let's just say that it hasn't reopened in over five years after a possum infestation was discovered in the kitchen. 14. I was inspecting a pizza place. They used a proofer to prepare the dough. Think a big, warm human cabinet. I opened it up and a million flies flew at me. I closed the door and looked through the glass. Someone had left a tray of dough in the proofer for a long time. The tray was filled with what seemed to be a billion maggots. The dough had turned to liquid at this time. The manager of the store tried to tell me it was only left overnight. They'll lie no matter what. 13. At Coors Field in Denver, one health inspector found a live mouse in a commercial-sized bag of molasses-flavored popcorn and peanut snacks. But wait, there's more! He also found five live cockroaches in a trap in the storage room. Two weeks earlier, inspectors had found a large number of mouse droppings on the kitchen floor in food prep trays inside a bin of rice. Yeah, inside. And among bags of cookies that had been chewed. 12. I was in a barbecue joint inside a casino. They told me the place was an issue, and they had washed their hands of problems hoping they would just close shop. Needless to say, the flies were a problem. But the biggest concern was the prop table in the kitchen that had never been cleaned. It was a very large and stainless steel table. The bottom of the tabletop was dripping with grease and fat. No clue how it got there. Maggots were crawling all over the underside of the table. The smell was nothing I will ever forget. This place served hundreds of people a day under their horrid incompetence. 11. I worked on the private side, auditing 29 different chains in the US. I did a couple inspections a day for a little under three years. I have hundreds of stories. I can smell roaches the second I walk into the building, if they're present. They have a nutty, oily smell that is very distinctive if you're around them often enough. That's a smell you never forget. Relevant story, I was in a popular buffet chain and couldn't find the roaches I smelled. I looked everywhere. I called my buddy, who was a pest control officer. He came in, grabbed a large shop vac, and said, move fast. He lifted off the back of the soft serve ice cream machine, and they poured out like a waterfall all over the floor. We got them all cleaned up. Soft serve ice cream machines all leak, and typically they're not cleaned well. Hot, wet, and dark is the perfect place for an infestation. 10. My friend was inspecting a restaurant, walked out the back to find a huge man stirring a huge pot of curry with his arm. No spoon or anything, just up to his hairy elbows in curry. Nine. We had a health inspector get called into a crime scene by the police where there was blood all over the place. A robber shot the owner's wife, and the owner chopped him to death with a cleaver in the restaurant. When the police showed up, the kitchen crew were eating pizza in the middle of the mess. Not sure what the police wanted her to do that they couldn't do. It was a crime scene. Eight. Went to a cheesecake factory once to test a milk storage tank. It had been cleaned and was being prepped to be filled with a tanker full of milk. I noticed the floor of the tank was covered in bleach. It turned out the floor manager couldn't be arsed to spend the time sucking out the rest of the cleaning fluid used in the cleaning process and, as standard, just filled the tank with milk on top of a dozen gallons of bleach. His theory was that if there was enough milk to dilute the bleach to acceptable consumption levels. I wrote a report and he was promptly fired. 7. My husband once did an inspection of a southern style place. While inspecting the fridge, he noticed they had cat food in there. He was preparing to talk to the owner about not feeding strays, but instead she began talking about how she got a good deal on a pallet and no one could tell the difference. Yeah, she was using it on the tuna melt sandwich. That place was known for its tuna melt. I don't even like tuna. Probably never will now. Six. Not me, but my mother is a health inspector. She inspected a Chinese restaurant in the kitchen. There was a bucket of urine under a preparation bench. The chefs used the bucket instead of making the trip to the restroom. Five. I used to work at a deli years ago. When I first arrived, there were chicken breasts covered with bright green scabs sitting uncovered in the walk-in. I asked if I could throw them out and was told no. Two weeks later, when we ran out of chicken for our salads, I was told to go get the by now fuzzy green chicken breasts, cut off the green parts, and salvage the rest. I avoided doing it, stating I had no time and did other things. My boss did it instead. 
I threw them all out when I was working alone the next day and told her we sold them. I quit soon after. Four. I inspected meat and produce markets in Detroit, nonetheless. A particularly suspicious looking place was selling sketchy ground beef at a very low price. This guy had cases of rodent meat in his freezer. He was grinding it with his beef. Obviously, that is highly illegal, and he was shut down. Three. Struck up a conversation with the health inspector as he inspected my kitchen. He told me about our neighboring restaurant he just shut down. While walking through the freezers, he had noticed the fryer had not been drained and a rat had fallen in. Its tail was protruding from the now solid oil. After bringing this to the attention of the manager, the inspector went on to find various violations. When the inspector passed back through the fryer area, he saw that the solution to the fryer slash rat problem had been yanking the rat by the tail and cutting around the body before firing up the oil for the day's needs. He had been having trouble with this place for months, and after the rat corn dog incident, he ordered the doors to be locked and the restaurant to be closed. They're, they're gonna have to pay me more for this video. I'm, I'm done. I'm so done. Two. My favorite Chinese restaurant got shut down. My ex-wife worked for the city and I asked her what was the deal. She said the health inspectors found something leaking from the ceiling. They lifted the ceiling tile and shined a flashlight and saw multiple eyes staring back at them. It was chickens. They were raising chickens in the ceiling and chicken droppings were in the food that I'd been eating at least once a week. One. My uncle is a health inspector in rural Australia. He got several complaints about a fish and chips shop in a small town in Victoria with reports of people getting chunks of hair in their hot chips. So he rocks up one day unannounced in the middle of summer and the owner greets him and shows him around. This guy's body was covered in hair, not just on his arms and chest, but on his back and neck were like a werewolf. Clearly, this must be the source of the hair in the chips. My uncle decides to make a tactful comment about having to wear appropriate clothes when working so as to protect against hot oil burns. After seeing the property and giving a few basic suggestions, the only other thing he noticed that needed immediate attention was the deep fryer itself. The oil is old and filthy and likely full of this guy's hair. So he orders the bloke to drain it and right then and there, the owner does so. And at the bottom of the oil vat is a dead, deep fried and crispy, cat. Totally unfazed, the owner simply said, oh, that's where my cat went. What the hell? Turns out a few months previously, the shop was having a rodent problem. Shocking. So the owner bought in a cat to catch them. He thought the cat escaped overnight and ran away. Nope. Looks like little Fluffy drowned in the deep frying oil and Mr. Chippy has been frying him up over and over and over ever since. The clumps of hair locals were complaining about weren't from the half-man, half-wolf owner, but the fur and flesh of a dead cat. I love cats, so this is very sad to me and disgusting. So, even though I won't be reading any of these comments at this point, what are some of the worst health code violations you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below or tweet your answers to us at list25. Or don't. I mean it. I'm done. I am... I am absolutely done. Good night. Do you want me to spoil food places here for you? No, I don't want you to spoil food places here for me. So Chick-fil-A? No. Is actually good. Ah, yeah. There's so many people who are Their morals aren't always great, but Chick-fil-A is good. It tastes good. Yeah. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button on the bottom right and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com. While you're there, make sure to join our newsletter for exclusive lists, prizes, and so much more. You really don't want to miss out on this.